Hi, I'm Gareth Pronovost, I'm an Airtable consultant. In this video, I'm gonna be showing off the latest block from Airtable, which is the matrix block. Now, blocks are a part of the pro subscription to Airtable. If you're not a pro user, you're still gonna get a lot of value from your free version, but if you want to try a free trial, which includes blocks and some of the other uh, perks of the pro membership, uh, I will include an affiliate link below. And also, if you have any consulting or training questions about Airtable, please reach out. I will include a link for a free consultation. But without further ado, let's get into the good stuff. Welcome to Entrepreneurship by the Numbers, where we help unlock the potential of your business with data-driven metrics. Okay, jumping into Airtable here, we have a block that we're headed towards and we are trying to put things into a grid. So in order to facilitate that, just taking a quick look at our base here, we have two fields that have single, uh, single select options here. So for we're doing a basic SWOT analysis. We have the helpful and the harmful columns, and then we will have the internal or the external scopes. And there are a couple of things going on, and I'll explain each of these. So the driving uh, field here, which is the, you know, the name category, is actually going to be a formula for us. We are doing a concatenate formula. We're going to concatenate an emoji with a dash, and then whatever the issue is. So looking at this formula, we are going to see concatenate, emoji, dash, and then the issue. And the emoji, we're going to point towards this conditional emoji. And what we want is an emoji that will change for four different cases. So in the case where it is helpful and internal, we want one particular return. Helpful external is another, etc. cetera, etc. And so you see I built this formula here. Since this isn't a video about formulas, I'm not going to go into terribly too much detail about this in this video, but we have uh, an if and statement written for each of these. And so we have basically this is saying if vector is helpful and if the scope field is internal, then return a one. And then we're going to check another condition. If that's not true, we're going to check vector helpful, scope external and return a two. And so we have this for four times for the four different options that this might include. So first thing we want to do is include some emojis in here instead of numbers. And so I'm going to uh, go ahead and take some time and just do that really quickly. All right. Now that we have our emojis coming through, we've got a nice uh, strong flexing arm for our strengths and we have um, a opportunities gets an OK symbol, our uh, weaknesses get a worry face and a thunderstorm comes in for our threats. So perfect, that looks good. Uh, now what we need to do is point this emoji uh, field or this concatenate formula to the emoji rather than displaying this text. So we're going to go into the customize field type again and we're going to double click this and just remove this emoji. So this whole first condition is instead going to point to this field. So we're going to sup, uh, supplement conditional emoji in place of what was there previously. And we only need these quotations if we're typing in text, so I've gotten rid of those. And there we have it. So we now see our emoji along with whatever the issue that we're addressing is. Now I filled out five examples. These you could change to whatever you wanted just by overriding here. And we're gonna jump into this matrix and take a look at the block. So by creating a block, we can just come up here and select, or we can hit Control Shift Backspace takes us to the block page, we will add a block, tell it which block we're looking for, that is the matrix block, and add that to the base. A couple of things we're going to notice here. All right, so we have columns, and we have rows, and it has uh, started to assume that it knows, um, you know, which, where, where we're headed with this. As a matter of fact, with a SWOT analysis, I want my helpful and harmful columns, or to be columns, not rows. So I'm going to need to switch these around. So the columns need to become the vector. So I select columns, change it to vector. You'll see that this blanks out now, 
because we have both rows and columns looking at the same thing, which uh, it's giving us a warning that says they should be different. So we have to, of course, change the rows to scope. Once we have that included, now this is looking better. We've got the columns where we want them. We've got the rows where we want them. But I do want the helpful row, or excuse me, the helpful column to be first, to come before harmful. In order to make this change, we need to go into the uh, field type itself and change the order that they're listed. So if I want helpful first, once I click save, you'll see that this switches over in the block. And magic, nice. All right, so going back into the block, uh, you'll notice that these are the examples that we have in our grid format that do not have um, you know, columns and rows assigned to them yet. So the nice thing about the matrix block is we can just do a nice click drag and bring this into whatever uh, section of the matrix we feel it belongs. Now the nice, the good thing about the conditional formatting that we already wrote is it's going to change the name and give us an instant emoji on this as soon as we've dropped it into uh, the grid. So as you see, this becomes a worry face. If example four were decided to be a strength, we could drop it in here and it will be updated accordingly. So we can just very easily uh, you know, play around with these, move them, and you'll see that when we go back to the grid form, these inf pieces of information have been filled out corresponding to how we uh, determined these different uh, these different records uh, behaved. So the last thing you might want to do on your uh, matrix view is getting rid of these empty, this empty column and also this empty row. So to remove the column, just click here, only show columns with records, and now we only have those two columns. Similarly, we can get rid of the blank row by doing that, and we can select done, and now we have this great looking SWOT analysis. Well, I hope that was really helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, do leave them below in the comments. And uh, don't forget to click subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. In the meantime, best of luck as you continue to grow your empire. Thanks.